So if you've heard about the armor of God before, um, but you don't know what it's all about, I want to share um, the Bible basics from the King James Version in the Bible about why people talk about it or why Christians talk about it and a little bit of what I understand about the armor of God. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, actually chapter 5 and 6, um, is a lot of really, really, really good advice about Christian living and um, um, family living and how you work or how you lead with your children and with your parents and your spouse. Anyway, what I want to talk about is in Ephesians 6, and it starts in verse 10. And let me read it to you first. And, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles are attacks or the darts of the devil. Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And one more that people tend to leave out. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints if you don't know what that means about praying always in the spirit i'll link my other video about that about the baptism and praying in other tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in other tongues or praying in the Spirit, as some people call it. Starting back at verse 10, um, it's key to understand that anything about the armor of God is about the power of His might. None of this hinges on our might. The only thing that this hinges on is our obedience, not our might. Our obedience. In fact, if you could have one and only thing about all of this, I mean, just with the shield of faith, it says, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I mean, <laughs> that right there, one thing out of all of this, the shield of faith, that you believe that God is good, that you have faith that his will for you is that no matter what happens, that all things work together for good for you. But that doesn't by any mean 
uh, stop the barrage of attacks. That's where I believe the sword of the spirit comes in. That you can quench all the fiery darts, these attacks, of the spiritual dark forces. Um, but the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If you've never read about Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, he had fasted, I believe it was for 40 days in the wilderness. The devil tempted him three times. Each of those three times, he responded the same way. He responded in kind. He said, Thou shalt not, or he quoted the word of God. And this is the, how the sword of the spirit works. It is the only offensive tool in the armor of God. I've heard a couple different people mention this before about if you're fully covered in the armor of God, who do you think the enemy thinks he's fighting if you are completely equipped with the entire armor of God? It is called the whole armor of God. Do you suppose that if you are completely equipped in all these areas that he really has no force that he can defeat you with because he thinks he literally thinks he's fighting God if you're wearing God's armor. Anyway, I've heard it mentioned a couple times before and it's kind of a neat thought. I don't know whether it's entirely true or not, but I mean, listen to it. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Your loins. Think about it. The first thing people start doing when they're unfaithful with their loins is lying. And then getting stuck lying even more to cover up the lies. I shall move on. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. You see somebody that's proud or successful, you know, what do they do? They stick their stick out their chest that they are the best or they are victorious. That it's all phony. But if you are righteous, if you are made right in right standing with God, as if because of the blood of Jesus and forgiveness of sins, it's as if You've never sinned. You can stand before God and pray and he can look at you because Jesus, his blood, paid the perfect sacrifice for the consequence of your sins. That you can literally stand before God and if you can stand before God, I mean, that's the beginning, beginning of wisdom, to fear God. If you fear God, whom shall you fear? Whom else shall you fear? So the breastplate of righteousness, to know that you are righteous, you are made right, in right standing with God through forgiveness of your sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I believe that's referring to go. When Jesus said in uh, Matthew 28 close to the end he said all power has been given all power has been given to me both in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age or the end of the world I believe that is what the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace is. Is that you're actually going, you're obeying this great commission of Jesus Christ and doing the very thing that he told us to do. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Talked about that. 
if you believe, if you trust God and you believe, then there are no darts, fiery darts, of Satan that can take you out. The helmet of salvation, let's come back to that, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How do we use the sword of the Spirit? By speaking the Word of God about our situation or our circumstances. And I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about making something up or trying to convince you of something. But you can say that I believe that the Word of God is true. And I believe that God's will for me is good. And that all things, no matter what you're going through, all things work together for good. For those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? I can't imagine you watching a video like this and listening for 10 plus minutes and not have some type of calling of God on your life. You certainly love God if you've been listening for 10 minutes or more. Back to the helmet of salvation. There's a deba debate, I think, between Baptists and Pentecostals. And I believe the Baptists generally believe that if you're once saved, that you're always saved, no, no matter how far astray somebody goes. And the Pentecostals, or at least some of the Pentecostals that differ in doctrine from the Baptist would say that you're only saved as long as you've repented of all your sin, which is why um, most Pentecostals that I've been exposed to um, don't actually believe you're born again until you have been baptized in water. So after they would get somebody born again, they would find the nearest wet wet source and uh, get somebody baptized emerged immersed in water um, what I what I take from all of this my point is that this helmet of salvation is protecting your mind that you don't let the lies of the devil or the opinions of others deter you from believing in your mind that you are saved. That when Jesus Christ returns for the church, or if you happen to pass away and die in the flesh before his return, that you will go to heaven. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You need to know in your mind, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? You can make that decision right now. John 3.16. Let me read it for you. You could have looked it up for yourself probably faster than I than I did. Here it is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever means me, and whosoever means you. You simply need to believe that, number one, Jesus is and was the Son of God. And number two, that he died and rose again from the dead for your sins, for my sins. There's a whole section on that in one of my videos that you can, uh, you can check out. But if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, 
and to receive salvation <laughs> like that armor of God, the helmet of salvation, and know that if you were to die today, or if Jesus returned tonight, that you would go to heaven. Then pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that I am a sinner and I need a savior for my sin. I accept Jesus Christ as the perfect punishment for my sin and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please help me to live for you and to do your will and I thank you for it and I love you for it. In Jesus name, amen. You are saved. Say it. Say, I am saved. With the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's something to be excited about. Read your Bible. I suggest that you start in the book of John and you can read Romans, the New Testament. Uh, Proverbs in the Old Testament is very, very good as well. There's 31 chapters. You can read one chapter each day, each day of the month. It's an easy place to pick up when you missed a couple days and pray. Talk to God. Talk to God while you're driving down the road with your eyes wide open, of course. But talk to God about the little things in your life. And if you've watched any more of my uh, other videos, you will see that some of the biggest things that God has done in my life were some of the most insignificant things that others would consider to have happened. And uh, I've seen some pretty awesome things, but I still hold by the, the smallest things. Let me know that he is watching every little detail of my life and he cares. And he cares for you too. Thanks for watching.